29. How many isomers of esters can we have from C5H10O2 if methanoic acid is one of the two reactants used? So what we can see is we can draw a structure. This part is contributed by your methanoic acid, so it's fixed. This part will be contributed by your alcohol. Okay, and then we have to see how many structural isomers can we get or isomers can we get from this combination C4H9 so what I started off with will be a straight chain a branch 1, 2, 3 and branch here the branching can also occur at this carbon and then we can also have more branching that looks like this so there are 4 structural isomers and then looking at all across or looking at the question including stereoisomers and all that well we must check that this one there's also a chiral carbon at this point so we have a total of one two three four for the mirror image and five total of five possible ester isomers Thirty, we have we are comparing before and after step one. So before is this structure, after will be this structure. They are the same number of atoms. It's just that they are in different positions. So the easiest way to describe reaction one will be the rearrangements. We have isomerism. Oxidation numbers of aluminium, chlorine and nitrogen. If we did it correctly, you should see that these are the changes for the three of them. Aluminium is increasing, oxidized, chlorine decreasing, reduced, nitrogen increasing, oxidized. So all three statements are correct. Thirty-two. Comparing sodium and magnesium, they have the same number of full electron orbitals. If you do the SPDF, sodium will be 3s1, magnesium has a full s orbital, 3s2. So they do not have the same number of electron orbitals that are full. It is full for magnesium. Same number of neutrons, sodium has 11. Magnesium has 12 protons, so if you take the difference between the nuclear number and the protons, we will end up with 12 neutrons. So 2 is correct. Both sodium and magnesium are metals, they will want to be oxidized. And when that happens, they are acting as reducing agents. 4. Reaction pathway for a reversible reaction the backward reaction so we are comparing the amount of energy of A versus B and B has 20 kilojoules less than A so entropy change for the backward reaction is decreased by 20 kilojoules that's correct forward is endothermic if you go forward you see that we have to gain energy to reach the level of A. So forward is endothermic. Activation for the forward is plus 70. Activation will be this level all the way up to the peak here. So it is plus 70. Which diagram represents giant molecular structure? That will involve covalent bonds. Many covalent bonds joining atoms together so this is your diamond and your graphite they are giant molecular this is giant but this is giant ionic for sodium chloride thirty five involve 
you to be able to know what are your W, X, Y, and Z. W is your magnesium oxide, X is your calcium carbonate, Y, calcium oxide, Z will be calcium hydroxide. So what statements are correct? Statement 1, more acid is neutralized by 2 grams of X versus 2 grams of W. You can use a balance equation to compare this statement. So we have calcium carbonate and using hydrochloric acid, hydrochloric acid as example. We have our equations for both of them. And then using 2 grams each, I divide by the MR, we will have 0 0.02 moles of calcium carbonate, 0 0.05 moles of magnesium oxide. Using the ratio, we will have 0 0.04 moles of acid for X and 0 0.1 mole of acid for W. So more acid is neutralized by X is not correct as suggested by the statement. More acid should be neutralized by W. That makes statements 2 and 3 correct. The MR of X is greater than MR of Y. Okay, comparing your calcium oxide versus calcium carbonate, there's a difference of 44. Metallic element in Y, calcium reacts more quickly than magnesium. That is also correct. Element J is a solid, it's a contaminant of fossil fuels. So J is actually your sulfur. It forms sulfur ox dioxide, which is K, and then under catalyst, it can actually go to sulfur trioxide, which is L. So comparing J, we have PET P electrons. J will be sulfur, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p4. So it does have a PET P electrons. To go from sulfur dioxide to sulfur trioxide, you do need a catalyst. It doesn't really take place that easily in atmosphere. And then sulfur trioxide and water will form sulfuric acid, which is a strong acid. What can be produced during terminating step where it involves propene or propane? Well, for propane, we can remove the hydrogen from the terminal carbon. We will get this radical. We can also remove the hydrogen from the second carbon. We will get radical B. And then if we do our combinations, okay, the first one is where we have a, the terminal carbon joined to a second carbon. So that is possible. This is a joining of A and B. If we join two middle carbons together, a B and another B together, we will get something that looks like two. Okay, one, two. Okay. Number three, we will not get a combination that gives us a structure of three. So three will be out. Thirty-eight using halogen alkanes, possibly CFCs and all that. Why do we coat it with on the aircraft seating? Well, the CFCs don't catch fire easily, so they will be safer in case there's a fire breakout. The treated fabric forms hydrogen bonds. The halogen alkanes, the halogens are not directly joined to H; they are joined to C and all that, so they don't have hydrogen bonds. So this is not applicable. So statement 3 must be wrong also. Thirty-nine. Liquid X can be a mixture or a single compound. When reacting with sodium, it gives off hydrogen gas. That means it could be alcohol or it could be an acid. 
and then treating with 240 MPH it gives orange crystals it could be ketone or aldehyde okay but it will be a carbonyl either way so we are sure that it at least must be carbonyl we are not sure whether it's one of them is carbonyl or both of them is carbonyl or or the rest of the mixtures are carbonyls also and we are not sure whether X could be alcohol or it could be an acid so not necessary alcohol must be present how can we get ethanoic acid we can hydrolyze your nitrile that has two carbons we can oxidize your two carbon alcohol or we can oxidize your two carbon um, aldehyde all this will give us ethanoic acid